Yam TV. Press play. Welcome to Yam TV. I am Apostle Joseph Mullins, and today I'm joined by Apostle Solomon Bedetti. And this time we are in London at the Headquarters Church Restoration Bible Fellowship. Um, we wanted to take this opportunity to really um, speak to our Apostle and find out a bit more about the work that's being done in India. We've seen it firsthand, myself and Brother Michael, and um, we're always keen to know how success is being achieved on, um, on our fields and if we can learn anything from those experiences. So before Apostle flies back to India, we wanted to spend some time today with him. Just want to say thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Um, my first question is really going to be about the just an update on the work in India, and just tell us how um, how you've been able to help the church to grow, what strategies you might have used, and what you what you feel is working very well. Well, <clears throat> greatly all in the precious name of Jesus Christ, and uh, thank God for this opportunity to share about the work in India. And to begin with, uh, I must tell the work started with my father, Mr. Joshua Godetti, and Prophetess Mother Flowers. Mm -hmm. She came in 1969. They met and established the first uh, Restoration Royal Fellowship Church in India. And uh, till 94, we had my dad had been traveling to different places, of course, in different parts of India, east, west, north, south. And he has really labored a lot and in the time when there was much de much development, even hardships and in difficult circumstances, he preached the gospel along with some of the elders of the church and some of the pastors who were working with him during that time. At that time, when I took over from my dad, we had around five churches, around five churches uh, in '94. Apart from all the different uh, preaching points in Andhra, and different places, and uh, and the Lord called me in '92 when I was ordained in the ministry right in this church. 92 when I came first time to London and I was ordained as a pastor for the church in Kurla and then my father was alive and he was the one who saw my work and recommended Apostle Mullings to ordain me in the ministry not necessarily as a pastor but just to be an evangelist or something like that so after coming here I was ordained as a pastor and uh, from then on, I was still working in Indian Navy even during that time. Mm. And I wanted to know from the Lord whether it is my own will or whether the Lord has called me. And when I prayed, the Lord spoke to me through dreams and visions that He has indeed called me. He spoke to me through Isaiah 58. And uh, different pastors came and prophesied over me that the Lord is going to use you in the coming days. So, I thank God for all this encouragement. I was just thinking they prophesied just to encourage me, but later on I found out that whatever they prophesied, it was from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in 95, when I became desperate, uh, uh, because on one side the work was growing on, the, a lot of people were inviting me to preach the gospel to different places and cities, and I was not able to give much time to my job. Mm -hmm. So it was then when the Lord uh, spoke to me through vision that I have to resign my job and do his ministry in full time. Can I ask what kind of job you were doing at the time? I was working in Indian Navy as a mechanic. Okay. Mechanic in the ships. Right. Yeah. And uh, it was a good job. But I was much more interested in doing the work of the Lord. <laughs> It was only for my living that I was working. Right. But I had a desire to do the work of the Lord right from my childhood. I never thought I would be a pastor, but I wanted to support my father and the ministry 
through finances. Yes. Just work, get good job and support with my finance. Right. And what were the money I was earning during my service? I was putting everything in the ministry, wow. helping my family, apart from my helping from my parents, for my parents, and then for the money I was re remaining, I was putting it all in the ministry to travel different places. Uh, in '95, when I the Lord uh, helped me to win, started winning souls. It was the turning point in '95 when one, one of the sisters in our church was possessed of the evil spirit. She belonged to a different church, but she was uh, being possessed and troubled by the witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And somebody guided them to me and I went and prayed. That was my first case to deal with the evil spirit. <laughs> and all there were many who were trying to cast out the spirit, but they were not able to do it. If, and if anyone was going near them, that devil would try to attack them mm. physically. Right. And when I went near, then the two sisters started moving backwards. Mm. And I got the confidence that the Lord was with me. Right. And then as I laid my hand on her and cast out the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit cried with a loud voice and left. Wow. And then I preached the gospel to them. That if you want complete deliverance, you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and get filled with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. so that the Spirit would not attack you again. Right. So, for a week or two weeks, I was continually going, the Spirit would come and attack her again and again. Then I was always teaching them the Word of God. Finally, when she agreed to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that's the time she got the deliverance and she got ready for baptism. And seeing that miracle, about 35 people of that family got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, wow. So that was the beginning of my ministry. 35 people. So how yeah. much did the church grow by at that point? It was the beginning. At that time, we had only Kurla Church okay. in Mumbai, yes. apart from different churches. In church 35 people from one person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at one stretch. And then it was confirmed that the Lord has called me. You yeah, know, He spoke to me through Isaiah 58. Yeah. And after a month, this incident happened and 35 people got baptized. Wow. So it was the work that proved that the Lord has called me. And then the Lord, uh, and I baptized those people. I said, now you have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We have to pray, fast and pray for the Holy Ghost. Then we all decided to fast and pray once in a week. And every week we could feel the presence, but we were not sad. And I would tell them, don't pray for any other needs. Just pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. On the third week, fasting prayer, she could see that sister who was delivered from the sin. He could see that was cloud was coming up on her and then going back. Mm -hmm. And asked, at that time she was wearing ornaments and all those things. Right. And she said, oh, I'm trying, crying for the Holy Ghost, but I'm not able to get it. I said, then the Lord inspired me to show her to the scripture about the ornaments. Then I found out that the ornaments were hindering her from receiving the Spirit. Right. Holy Spirit. And then I showed her to the scriptures, so Genesis 35, and also from the New Testament, that these are the gods which the Lord told us to cast out. Right. and sanctify yourself. And the following Sunday, she removed bangles, she removed everything, but she did not remove the one chain. <coughs> Sorry. The chain was still there, it was called as Mangal Sutra. It is a sign, sign of a marriage. So she's wearing these bangles, but they're not, they're not just jewelry. They're not jewelry. <coughs> she removed the earrings, she removed the bangles, she removed everything. And the next following week, when we started praying, we were, we were maybe around 15 to 20 people were there in that room. And when we all started repenting and praying, the Holy Spirit came upon all of us. Wow. We started speaking in tongues and prophesying. And when that Spirit came upon this sister, that uh, chain just broke off and fell down. 
Wow. And seeing that incident, it was proved that before God gives us the Holy Spirit, He wants us to be sanctified right. completely from right. inside and outside. Right. And that was also a sign for us to preach, evidence for us to preach that it is not uh, wearing ornaments is not scriptural. So from that, then the Lord bestowed the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the gift of dreams and visions. Then we started receiving the names and address of the people where we have to go and preach the gospel. Tell us more about that. So you were getting dreams from mm -hmm. which houses to go to, to yes. bring the gospel to? Yeah, yes. it was uh, in our church members, they had the gift of the dreams and visions. Right. See, and it was, I had a different gift. Everyone had a different gift. Someone speaking tongues, someone speaking prophecy, someone speaking dreams and visions. And this particular sister had a gift of dreams and visions. And the Lord would show her the name and address, even the telephone number. Wow. Whom we don't know. And getting, whenever she would repeat that dream or vision, we would write it in our diary. And then I would contact those person, like pastor. And when I would get reply, then it was confirmed that there is a church, there wow. are people who are waiting so, for it. So these were all pastors or, or people who had already received the truth, but maybe wasn't connected in to different, it? Yeah, they were in different faith. Different, okay. In different <clears throat> faith, not in the apostolic doctrine. Right. For instance, we received the address of Pastor Dulara Masi in Haridwar, Uttaranchal. And we told him, and he welcomed us, he replied to our letter and we went to meet him. We sent our photograph. It was a three days journey. Wow. We went there and he received us. We are in three days meeting. And we preached the truth, the Apostles' doctrine for, for the one true God and the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And at the end of the service, that pastor, his wife and 12 members of his church he got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. In that where church is established there. Wow. So, so, so the Lord used dreams and visions to actually grow yes. this church and to confirm Amen. the work. It was, you know how Cornelius was given the address of Peter? Yes. Peter was given the address of Cornelius. Yes. Paul received in a dream a Macedonian person is calling him, come yes. and preach the word yes. of God. It was the same ministry that we had that helped us to go and beyond Bombay, beyond different, wow. beyond our state, West Bengal, Nagaland, Haridwar, South India, North India. So it is through the gifts of dreams and visions that the Lord helped us to travel so many places and establish so many churches. Uh, now the Lord is still leading us and we are praying. So far, the Lord has helped us to establish around 50 churches in different parts of India. Mm -hmm. Through this uh, ministry, we baptize more than 10,000 people in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. And the church is growing by the grace of God. And we are praying. Uh, we are not satisfied with whatever we have achieved so far. Mm -hmm. We want to see a revival where millions of souls are coming to God. Mm -hmm. uh, I got this vision when I went to Ethiopia. When I saw the ministry there, you know, five million people in the same doctrine, in one organization, believing in one God, baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And every year they gather in Vara Crusade, around five lakhs people. 500,000 people in, in those five days conference, crusade. Seeing that uh, conference and that crusade, my vision end, enlarged for India. Yeah. So, and that's, that's uh, my Bishop Teklamirim. Bishop Teklamirim's church. Yeah. And then we are continually in fellowship with them. Yes. And by God's grace, they are coming. Uh, to our India also and encouraging our church. We are also going there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my vision for India is to see that same revival, to see millions of souls coming to God and working all under one banner. 
and and uh, to proclaim this truth of one God. So now, for the growth of the church, there are some more challenges we are facing now because of the internet and Facebook <coughs> and all the things of this world. The churches are becoming cold. Mm. So then we decided to start fasting and prayer for the young people. And I put a challenge for them now. At least every church must have 500 believers in their church. Mm -hmm. So you must fast and pray. That is the only answer. There is no other way. Yeah. Live a holy life. Fasting and prayer is not just being a hunger, just uh, not eating. Fasting and prayer means you are not only to fast for food, uh, stay away from food, but you have to stay away from all the worldly things. Right. Live a holy life. Yes. Living a holy life is also a kind of fasting. If you see Isaiah 58, God knows what kind of fasting you are making. Yes. Just being hunger, uh, eating, just staying away from food is not enough. Fasting means you have to live a holy life, forsake the things of this world, pleasures of this world, entertainment, all the unholy things that we have to separate ourselves. Yeah. If you see uh, in Joel 2.23 says, proclaim a fast, sound a trumpet, bring the young people, bring the ch small children, let the bridegroom mm. come out of his chamber <coughs> and the bride out of her closet. That means they, God wanted <coughs> even them to live a holy life. So, fasting and prayer with holiness will break the chains, mm -hmm. will deliver many souls from the bondage of Satan. Tell us about the pastors conferences that you do. And, yes. Uh, and, and when you say 10,000 have been baptized, is it sometimes as a result of the pastors conferences, mm -hmm. do you count those souls into that number, people who may not necessarily join? Yeah, the, that is one of the mistakes that we have made. We have baptized many people, but we did not uh, follow up them. Okay. But they are in the truth, but they don't have any fellowship. Okay. So now we are concentrating on reaching out to them and bringing them back to the fold. Okay. And establishing a church wherever there is no fellowship. So that is our goal now. And second thing, we have started a pastor's seminar where we invite pastors from different denominations to attend that seminar. And we pay for the pastors traveling along. We pay for their food. And if they're coming from far, they will, we provide them accommodation. And uh, at a time we call around 50 pastors for one seminar and uh, we preach the Apostles' Doctrine to them about the One God Doctrine, about the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and about living a holy life, being baptized with the Holy Ghost. And, uh, in two days sessions, four sessions we have in two days. In four sessions I cover the whole doctrine. And then the pastors who agree, they come and approach and they get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and then they go to their churches, preach this truth and then they baptize their people. Mm -hmm. So in this way, some of the church have been already added to our church. So for last year we have nearly at uh, we preached nearly to 500 pastors wow. in South India. Wow. And this year we could not do it because of the lack of finance. We just only had two seminars this year. Because for one seminar we need at least a thousand dollars. Okay. US? Yes, thousand US dollars. Like around fifty to sixty thousand rupees. Right. It's for traveling expenses, for food and everything. And even me going there sometimes by flight and coming. Right. Because of the uh, lack of time, 
I help to travel in flights sometimes. So including all the food and travel, it's around thousand dollars per seminar. So this time we could not do it because we had uh, different challenges to build a shed over our church head, uh, our headquarter church in Kalyan. And uh, it was a very urgent need. And by God's grace, we were able to put up the shed. So we received some help from your church and also collected often from different churches and from our local church. So somehow we put up that shed and it took around uh, 420,000 rupees in rupees. So it's around five to six thousand dollars. By God's grace we done it. We are now in need of, we also want to build the compound for that church. Yes. <clears throat> Last time I shared that with you. Yes. And we still need some more funds for that. We need at least uh, two thousand pounds for uh, two thousand dollars for that. Okay. Maybe fifteen hundred pounds or twelve hundred pounds, something yeah. like that. We can have good compound for the church. Yes. And uh, so that's where we are, the Lord has brought us. And uh, and then uh, one more thing that we need most is the mother church needs um, in Kurla needs a church building. At least if we can have one small church building in metropolitan city. Yeah. So. Are there, are there any Pentecostal or Apostolic churches in Mumbai city yes. at the moment? We have many UPC church okay. and some uh, and in. There is uh, one more pastor, you know, one more pastor from Trinitarian background. He got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. And now he is baptizing his believers. Wow. His name is Pastor Babu Bandari. Okay. So he is very helpful for us to reach out in Bombay to different, past, different denomination pastors. Right. And whenever he arranges any meetings, he calls <coughs> those pastors and he invites me to preach in his meetings. Brilliant. So. That is so. If we have, if we can have in our own church over there, it will be a great help for us. And we already collected twelve thousand pounds for that, and we are still in need of twenty thousand pounds to finish that. Yeah. To finish that, and we can have our own church building. And I am obligated to build the church because it is a mother church established by my father and mother flowers. Mm -hmm. So. And they are, at least they must have one church because yeah. since last 40 to 50 years, 49 years, they are serving in rented, in school, rented rented. school. Yeah, you remember the school that you yes. came. Yes. So we are praying for that, and the reason I have put the target of winning many souls is also behind that is also finance. The more souls we win, the more finance we can get. Easier to carry the load. Yeah. yeah. So we can be self-dependent. Absolutely. Yeah. We cannot, uh, we cannot every time ask other churches to support us. You know. Yeah. We also should be able to build up our, our own finances. I agree. And I think for that my vision is to win souls first. So I, I told my church members now, the Lord wins the churches from outside, they will help us. The church in London and all that. But let us not depend on them. Let us also labor to bring souls. Mm -hmm. when, when we get the souls, automatically the finance will also come. Yes. So you've been coming back and forth from India to the UK for many, many years. Um, and what we're seeing is that the work in India is growing exponentially. And, and, and that's why partly I'm interested to hear what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, we're not having the same experience here at the moment. So I wanted to just get some thoughts from you on, you know, what, what do you think we could be doing here in the UK um, to, to, to expand? I think some people like to say, oh, you know, you know, it's India, perhaps it's easier to win souls, you know, we can make any kind of excuses, you know. But See, what, what would you say? What I would encourage, our fight is not against men or people. Our fight is against all the powers of darkness. Yeah. It is the Satan holding the people from coming to God, mm -hmm. from coming to the church. So recently, 
I got the revelation. Means I got some inspiration from the book of Bishop Teclamariam, where they were praying for a village to be saved. They started fasting and prayer for seven days, the whole church. And in that prayer, they were binding all the evil forces. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow the army men were patrolling. They heard some firing from that church, in that <laughs> direction, from that direction. And they followed that voice and they came to the church and they saw that many naked people running out of the church. Wow. And they were trying to catch them, but they were not able to catch them. Mm. And they went inside, they thought something is happening in the church. They must be having weapons. When they found out that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, they were all praying. They were not even looking at who is entering the church. Right. They were all prophesying and speaking in tongues. And then the army man just fired above on the top and the pastor opened his eyes and he saw and this army man said, we want to check this building. We are hearing firing songs from this place. <laughs> so they checked all the building. They did not find any weapon, no guns, nothing. Then they said, we have seen some people running out naked from this place and we were not able to catch them. What is this reason? Then the pastor got the revelation that we are all binding the evil forces through this fasting and prayer. Today is the seventh day. And I think the, in, the angels of the Lord coming and fighting those spirits, driving out those spirits. Wow. So after that, there was a great revival in that village. Yes. So what we feel now, it is the evil spirits that is bounding the people, it doesn't matter in which country it is. Right. Now, the only thing we have to do is, we have to bind those spirits through fasting and prayer. And the Lord will deliver those people through our prayer. You know. mm -hmm. Just bind that spirit that is holding the people. Last two weeks, what I have been doing in the fasting prayer, in the church on the after Sunday service, when the, I received the anointing of the Lord, I said, let us turn to the east side. Because the scripture says the Lord is going to bring the people, his people from east, west, north and south. Mm -hmm. Let us turn to the east and just raise our hands towards the east and bind all the spirits there. Yes. And ask the Lord to deliver the people. Mm -hmm. Then turn to the north and turn to the west. And I ask them to turn four directions and pray four times. Binding all the spirits. Yes. And one day all those souls are going to come. And after that prayer, one family, uh, one sister who was possessed of the evil spirit, she got deliverance. Because of her, her husband, both of them got baptized and they are coming to church. Yes, and through that family, another one evil spirit of epilepsy. 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 Yes. She got, now I am here and their work is spirit. Praise God. So God can use anyone, you know, it's not necessarily me. We have the spirit-filled men of God, yes. young men, yes. or who can, God can use even women, you know, for his work. So, mm -hmm. now they are waiting for me. They are also started coming to church now. So, God started bringing <coughs> new souls, you know. And same way we are experiencing same thing in Kurla also. And any new souls the Lord is bringing. The only thing I can encourage the church in this side, and that's what I preached, come back to the foundation, come back to the first works. When I came here first time, I could see the women fasting and prayer. Uh, I have seen street, street preaching. I was part of one of the street preaching here. And I have seen the youth ministry it was very powerful, all filled with the Holy Ghost. We come back to the first works, the Lord will definitely do the same thing again. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Solomon, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for sharing welcome. testimonies. Um, and I'm personally glad I've heard more testimonies today than I've heard before, mm -hmm. just of how God confirmed the work in the early times, in the early days of your ministry. Just one more thing I want to add. Go ahead. If we can ask the church to pray for the gifts of the Holy Ghost, for the dreams and visions.
and prophesying. That will be a great help yes. to open the doors for yes. the gospel. Amen. God can still speak, you know. Yes. He can still show you the address where you need to go. Right. Yes. The same this, is, this is how we started, Mother yeah. Flowers being directed yes. to the house so, of apostles. Yeah. It's still Amen. the same. So the church needs that gift. Amen. And that can be restored only by fasting and prayer, yes. by holiness, yes. coming back to the standard of God, what, according to the Bible, what God wants us to be. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Wish you all the best. Yes. And I'm sure. hoping the revival is not going to be in India, but all over the world, all even over. in UK. Yes. And I'm also looking forward to Canada. <laughs> You're Amen. You're very so well. If we establish a church in Canada, you can be an overseer. <laughs> this is our little secret. Uh, thank you for watching, everyone. We pray you've been blessed and inspired. Um, you know, I just want to just, I think, close and just reiterate some things. I'm, I'm pleased to hear how the Holy Spirit vindicated. Um, a lot of the doctrine, the standards of the church, how we should baptize, even how we should adorn ourselves. Um, there's so much arguments about some of these things. Oh, don't see this in the Bible. Don't see that clearly. But when, when a woman receives the Holy Ghost and her jewelry bursts off, I just think that's amazing. It's not only the one incident. There are several of those. Several incidents. So we, we, we thank God and we want to thank God for the, the foundations that we have and the roots that we have. Um, and, and in this, I will, I will close saying this, that the Bible says that you should not forsake your mother and father. And um, when it comes to our spiritual identity, we have to know where we've come from and who we've come from. And my identity is very much shaped by the, the leadership, mothers and fathers of the gospel that I have received. And I'm not tempted to become like anybody else because I don't have the appearance. And so the, the standards that we have and the things that we do, um, it's because God has revealed them to us and He's also confirmed His word with signs following. And for this, we'll continue to give God thanks. And we believe this is just the beginning. It's going to happen in our generation, it's going to happen in our time. And the more we hear this, is the more hungry we will get because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Have a blessed day. And as Brother Michael would say, stay close to Christ. Thank you so much. God bless you. And I want you to pray for us, pray for the ministry in India. We will also pay for it. Thank you. Thank you.